Okay, I thought I'd uh, work out this problem that's inspired by um, Changle and Bowles, 7th edition, problem 9-100. Um, it's a gas turbine Brayton cycle. Uh, I'll just kind of read through the problem. It says it operates between 100 and 2,000 kPa. The working fluid is air, enters the compressor at 40 C at a rate of 700 cubic meters per minute and leaves the turbine at 650 degrees C. For variable specific heats for air and assuming compressor isentropic efficiency of 85 percent and a turbine isentropic efficiency of 88 percent, determine the net power output, the back work ratio, and the thermal efficiency. So I thought this would be a good example to work out using the uh, Excel add-ins that we have for uh, ideal gas and you can get those uh, at the XL and ME website, which you can find at www.me.ua.edu slash XL. And if you go to this site, then uh, under the thermodynamics tab, you'll need to scroll down a little bit. It says all in one here in the middle. Uh, but this is mostly for condensable substances. If you scroll down a little bit, it says all in one for ideal gas. If you'll get this MSI uh, file and install it in your Microsoft Excel, then uh, you just run it from the command line. It will install automatically. Uh, then you'll have access to these add-ins that you'll see me using. Okay, so uh, here's the basic cycle. Let's put down some of the information that was given the low pressure in the system is 100 kPa the temperature entering the compressor is 40 degrees C but I'm going to go ahead and put that in as degrees Kelvin because of the way our add-ins work um, the uh, high pressure in the system was given to be 2000 kPa and the rate of flow entering the compressor was given as 700 cubic meters per minute Okay, sorry about that. Just a little check that everything is going well with the recording. Now, um, the, oh, and we're given that the temperature leaving the turbine is 650 degrees C. So that's T4, 650 degrees C. But as I said, we want to express that as degrees Kelvin. So um, the last bit of information we were given are the isentropic efficiencies for the compressor. Which was 85 percent and for the turbine 88 percent. So I'm going to make use of uh, defined names for in my formulas and you can find another YouTube video uh, in my channel about that but if you uh, want to define some names we can do that with create from selection and so I've done that now what's going to cause a problem in the solution here is the fact that we're given the outlet state uh, for the turbine that is the temperature and the pressure but we don't know the inlet state but we do know the isentropic efficiency of this turbine. So uh, it's going to be a uh, chicken and egg game to play with that uh, turbine, which probably we can get to straight away. Let's just go ahead and, and look at that. So we don't know the inlet temperature T3. So I'm going to put here this is unknown. 
and we need to find it. But um, we do know that it's, I don't know, it's, it's pretty hot. Let's, let's say, I, I, just a wild guess, let's put 2,000 degrees K. I don't know. Um, but we do know T4, and we do know the isentropic efficiency of a compressor. So the other thing that we know is that the pressure ratio across um, that turbine is uh, you know, 20 to 1, uh, pH over PL. I guess we can define that in here. Let's do that. Let's call R sub P pH over PL. Yeah, it would be 2,000%, but we really don't want to see it in percent. So let's make this a regular number. There we go. Uh, all right, so what do we know about this? We know that the uh, enthalpy, if we knew what that temperature was, that we could find that using our formulas for uh, ideal gas. That is, there's a formula called H air that will give us that value. We just have to make sure we give the uh, correct value for the temperature there. And so if the temperature is 2000 and the enthalpy is uh, 2251. That's not the correct temperature, but if it was, that's what H3 would be. Um, similarly, if that's T3, we can also find PR3, that is the uh, relative pressure. And there's a function for that, P relative for air, T3. Then, for the isentropic process, 3 to 4s, that's the ideal we can find the uh, pressure ratio, pressure, relative pressure 4s, it's got to be equal to um, P4 over P3 is the same as P4S over P, PR4S over PR3. So um, this has got to be equal to PR3. Divided by the pressure ratio. Okay, so um, continuing on, once we have this PR4S, we could then find T4 because that involves the isentropic efficiency. Um, uh, sorry, we can find T4S and then we can find H4 and T4. Now, one thing at a time. T4S is now going to be using that PR4S. This is equal to, um, there's a function for that. T as a function of P relative for air. And the P relative we know is PR4S. Okay, very good. Um, now what? Well, H4S, I mean, we just continue on with the analysis 
as if we know that T3. That's what we, we're doing. We're just going, if, if we knew T3, then this is what we would do to calculate T4. So um, H4S would be equal to H air based on T4S. And then finally we could get the work 3 to 4s as just being h3 minus h4s. And finally um, we could get the actual work by making use of the isentropic efficiency. So far, so good. And now, finally, we can write H four as being um, uh, from the enthalpy for the air. Sorry, we're going to get that from H3, and then we're going to subtract off the work we just found. All that's well and good, except um, the actual enthalpy is given by the actual temperature for that we were given. In other words, H based on T4, right? So what's the, the deal? The deal is we need to adjust the T3 that we were given or that we made up uh, to make this H4 that we calculate through all of these steps be equal to the H4 that's required, the H4 actual, the one that was given in the problem statement. He didn't give us the H, he gave us the temperature, but based on that temperature we can get the H and we just need to find. So how can we do that? We can do that in Excel using the goal seek. Um, the goal seek tab. And I think I'm going to have to go and find that. Let's see if I've got that. For some reason I have two developer tabs, but under the add ins, yes, I need to. Uh, the solver add in is here. So under data, there we go. Um, what if analysis? Goal seek. So here we go. We want to set not this cell, that's our the target value, but we want to set this cell, H4, equal to a value of 959.9577 by changing this, temp this cell T3. So Excel has built into it the root finder, if you will, that will vary what's in this cell until the target cell, in this case uh, B41, H4, until that cell has a value that we give it, which is this the one that we want it to be. So we just say, okay, let's go. And uh, he said, well, easily enough, I came up and solved that system of equations that you gave me. So in the end, he says 2000 was too high that the temperature actually would be 1693.5. And then that matches the uh, the temperature very well. Okay, so I think that's the, the hard part of this problem. Uh, just to kind of clean this up, I would probably go through here and put the uh, units on these various uh, quantities 
and show that this is temperature in degrees K. And those PRs are unitless. So I will change this to say uh, use gold seed. Here we go. So I think this is the hard part of this problem, and that once this is done, the rest of it is, is fairly straightforward. Uh, because we know the conditions going into the compressor, we know the compressor efficiency, and we now know this temperature 3, so we can find out how much heat is added in, in the heat exchanger. So I think we could uh, answer all the, the questions here. So I'll, I'll stop here for now, but just to summarize, uh, using the Excel add-ins uh, seems to be a great approach to this problem because it allows us to set up this set of simultaneous equations um, that can then be solved using the goal seek feature in Excel.